And the last two chapters of Acts recount Paul's journey to Rome. It is his status as a Roman citizen that allows him to appeal to the Roman emperor and to set sail for Rome. Here is an adventure story. What romance of the ancient world would be complete without a shipwreck? Have any of you ever been in a shipwreck? Oh, not one person? They're terrifying. It's, a, it's just an elemental experience. Oh, you should be in one some, once in your life. No, really, you should. Think of how profound a shipwreck is. What does it mean? You're lost at sea. You struggle against the elements. Oh, have you ever struggled with the sea? How little you know of life. How little you know of life. And what do you want? What do you want there, bobbing in the open sea, maybe holding on to a, to a plank? What do you want? You want one thing just in the pit of your being. What do you want? Water? No. Land? You want to be saved. You want to be saved. You want salvation. The wreck of a ship. All you want is to be brought safe into harbor. Hmm? Think of all the metaphors that surround seafaring, shipwrecks, harbors. God is the, the refuge, the safe harbor. God is an anchor. One of the great symbols. This has been lost somewhere along the way. But one of the great symbols of the early church is the anchor. It represents safe harbor. Paul survives the shipwreck performs miracles, and finally arrives at Rome. The great book of Luke Acts ends with Paul having come to Rome, and it says where he was kept under house arrest for two years. And the very last thing it says is that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. Now what does that remind you of? But the very prediction of Jesus, that the gospel would reach all ends of the earth. And here it has reached Rome, the capital of the empire, the greatest city that the world had ever seen. Then, with a population of nearly a million people, almost inconceivably vast in the ancient world, this sprawling metropolis. And it ends with Paul under arrest. And what does that mean? He was kept under house arrest for two years. Think of the artistry of that. Isn't that a strange way to end it? He lived for two years, or he was kept under arrest for two years. What does that imply? Well. He was treated well? Well, when is Luke Acts written? Say it loud. 85 is that loud? 85 to 90. 85 to 90. Is Paul alive no. when it's written? No. Absolutely not. Does Luke know that? Does I'm Luke sure. know that Paul is dead? Yes. Of course he does. You'd have to. You'd probably know that, wouldn't he? Yeah. Think about it. What are the great? What are the three greatest movies of all time? What do you think? Uh, Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. That's fourth. That's close. Uh, Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption. Absolutely not. That's <laughs> probably the possibly the most overrated movie of all time. Everybody loves that movie, but me. <laughs> Everybody's wrong. Why? What is the three greatest movies of all time? Uh, Indiana Jones, Dark Knight Rises, and uh, Blazing Saddles. One for three. Indiana Jones. Which one? Last Crusade. Last Crusade, obviously. What are the three greatest movies of all time? We have one. Sandlot. Sandlot. <laughs> hey, you know what, though? That, that makes me feel good. I assume that's one of those movies that you all had never seen. That movie was made before you all were born, probably. No? Good. Okay. What are the three greatest movies? Uh, Star Wars. Star Wars? No. Top ten. Obviously, Return of the Jedi, I mean. Okay. What are they? This is not just my opinion. Clay, what is the greatest movie of all time? Die Hard. Die Hard. <laughs> How many of you have seen Casablanca? Oh, isn't that the greatest movie? And truly the greatest movie of all time. Passion of the Christ. The Godfather. The Godfather. The greatest film ever made. Now think about how great art ends. 
right? This is the only kind of great art that's really in your life, in your world, in your cultural orbit, right? You probably haven't even been over to the museum and seen the paintings over there. Oh, you have? Nobody else has. Okay. And think of these, the way these great movies end. How does The Last Crusade end? He rides off into the sunset, quite literally, because the story will go on, right? Isn't that what that says? Hmm? How does Casablanca end? She flies, off. she flies off, right? And what does he say? Who's that? Somebody saying it? Here's looking at you, kid. And then what does he say to the inspector? Hmm? This is the beginning of a beautiful friendship. This could be the beginning, right? So the, why is it in that way? It's a good movie, but then that end is just a punch in the gut, right? It really is, isn't it, Rob? I mean, the ending is very powerful. Why is it so powerful? Leaves you wanting more, right? Because you realize that Rick all along is, has been a, a resistance hero, and he'll give up his love, right? Hmm? And his fight will go on. Oh, it's such a great movie. The Godfather, the greatest of all. How does The Godfather begin? The wedding, Marlon Brando, sitting in the office, right, as the Don, and they come to him. How does it end? with Michael sitting there in the same position. He's the Don. It goes on. He's been transformed. He was the all-American boy. Hmm? His uniform outside the family, but he's been changed. He's become. And now the story will go on. Right in all of these, the story goes on. Now, I ask you again to think of the ending of Acts. Is it just accidental that he says that Paul is kept under house arrest for two years. Luke knew that Paul had died, and he knew that, in tradition, Paul had been martyred by Nero in Rome. But he chooses not to end with the death, though you know he's dead. But think of the, the tone and the message and the motion, the movement that that provides. It ends not with the death of Paul. The story is not a biography of Paul. It's not the acts of Paul. It's the story of the, the church, of the gospel spreading to the ends of the earth. And so it ends with Paul alive, even though you know he'll die. But it ends not with his martyrdom, which is in the back of your head, but it ends with Paul alive, with the story going on, with the prediction that the gospel would reach the ends of the earth having been fulfilled. It is just as intentional as any of the endings of those great films, and you should See how it works into the themes of the narrative as a whole.